and then sometimes, you know, these, these ruts get really bad, okay, and people get stuck. Now, Jeffrey Schwartz uh, did some really, I think, amazing research starting back in the early uh, 2000s and up to this day. He took standard behavioral treatment, exposure and response prevention for OCD, and he added, he added one additional component. So here's how it goes. The person is exposed to something, okay? And I'll just keep using the example of the dirty toilet seat. Right. That's the exposure. Second piece, response prevention. The patient himself, or maybe with the help of a, you know, of a loved one, okay? Could be their coach or the therapist, will really encourage them, don't do it, don't do it, don't go wash your hands. Because normally they go and they spend the next three hours washing their hands. And what happens here is there's this rapid escalation of anxiety. They feel like they are going to just completely uh, lose it in terms of intense fear. And that lasts for about 15 minutes. And guess what? Across almost all patients, it starts to go down. And these people living with OCD have never lasted that long. 30 seconds are over there at the sink and the next three hours they're washing their hands. The anxiety is enormous, but they get a huge amount of cheerleading and support and encouragement from the therapist. And what they find is that they can hang in there for 15 minutes, it starts to go down. It's like, wow. And, and typically with uh, rather straightforward, non-complicated OCD, 21-hour exposure sessions, and you start to see the you start to see behavioral changes because you're also seeing brain changes. Now, that's standard uh, uh, treatment. Jeffrey Schwartz adds another piece to it. Okay, it's just like this. He says, now in this time when you're feeling this enormous anxiety, what I want you to do is, you know, on the spot, think about doing something different. And, and, and each each time that we practice this, I want you to do something different. And, and you could say it's a distraction. Well, probably is in some respects. I mean, he, he says, hey, go outside and you know, trim your hedges or something like that, or, or go you know, uh, look up a phone number in a book, you know, of a friend that you haven't called for a long time, something, okay? But it, it's looking like, now here's where I'm going with this. I'm gonna try to give you a lot more data to support this. It's not just distraction, but it's the act of willfully choosing something. Willfully choosing something appears to be, uh, you know, something people do that activates prefrontal cortex, okay? These people are caught in this kind of passive, they are, they are prisoners of this reverberating circuit, but they, with response prevention, coupled with actively choosing to do something else, and it begins to be, over a period of time, more and more and more effective at changing the behavior and very specifically changing brain functioning. <clears throat> so Schwartz says here, okay, when you're doing this, first off, the resisting the urge, simply gritting your teeth alone requires activation of prefrontal cortex, right? Actively redirect, directing your attention and choosing, again, I keep saying these words, but it's important, willful choice to do something different also activates prefrontal cortex. Basically, the frontal lobes are starting to work. And when you do this, uh, and when I say frontal lobes, I'm talking about the uh, prefrontal cortex and interior cingulate. They're starting time and time and time again practicing this, and they're getting strengthened. And eventually what happens, and, and this is what, what was astounding, after 20 weeks of, of this behavioral therapy, uh, all of the people had that abnormal uh, activation of that circuit that I talked about, 80, with Jeffrey Schwartz, approach, adding that additional element, 80% of people who underwent 20 weeks had marked symptom reduction, okay, and then you put them in a PET scanner and you have them touch a dirty can or, you know, whatever the thing is, or even just imagine touching a toilet seat, and, and in stark contrast to what things were like, you know, 20 weeks ago, now guess what? They get a momentary activation and immediately then you get activation of interior cingulate prefrontal cortex and it shuts the gate on the caudate and it, it closes it down. And, it's, and you see this with every single one of these responders to this behavioral treatment. This is a classic case of what was a pathological neural network that, that was holding this person prisoner. Eventually, by activating other parts of the brain and strengthening them, they could come in and then exercise more effective top-down control. And what, what we're going to see today, at least what I hope to show you, 
is this is a, a significant ish, a significant piece of emotional healing as you see not just in behavioral therapy but things that also occur in psychodynamic psychotherapy a slightly different version also in mindfulness meditation common denominators here about doing things that activate higher frontal lobe structures so they can exercise better top-down control and this is from short's book he says what this does it fires up little used inhibitory pathways interior cingulate okay prefrontal cortex and, and since they're not using the pathological it begins to weaken the pathological pathways this is neuroplasticity this is not transiently changing levels of serotonin or dopamine this is rewiring the brain in terms of changing the structure increased dendrites increased synapses but also significantly activating brain structures that when needed can come in and inhibit the obsessive compulsive experiences